everybody. Uh, we are here at the River Nith and we are going to be covering all about the outdoors here. Um, so we're going to be starting with lower elementary and so Emily's done some research on uh, art and how you can get that kind of artistic appeal here and what, what projects you can do based on that. I'm going to be talking a little bit about grade uh, six Ontario curriculum just to get a little practice for my future job um, and so we're going to be focusing on the science side for that and then Ainsley is going to be great doing a grade 10 Nova Scotia ELA and learning all about the writing opportunities that you can do here. Now we're going to be talking about the safety uh, here at the river. Obviously we have a couple of hazards around us the primary one being the water as it is moving and as you can see behind us there's a little bit of a drop so if somebody goes in the water it could turn into a pretty scary situation pretty fast. So we'll be talking with the kids before we arrive about our expectations of them uh, walking in pairs, uh, making sure they're not getting too close to the riverbank especially if it's a slope, uh, slope or if it's muddy um, and about our expectations of them listening to us when we ask them to come back. For early elementary art lessons, you can have your students come down and explore the river on their own, or depending on the age and ability of the class, you can set up a scavenger hunt as the teacher or some other way for them to be guided through um, everything there is to see. For an early lesson, you can have students sit anywhere they'd like and just draw what they imagine to be under the water. Uh, this is a really good setup for uh, creative uh, learning and using their imagination. And also you can go back to your class and you can look at some science outcomes and look at what might actually be in the river, such as salmon and plant life. After learning about line, texture, and color in the classroom, you can return to the river or this beautiful park, and students can pick up leaves or twigs um, or sand or anything they can find to bring back to them into the classroom to create their own pieces of art. For the last few lessons, students can come back to the river with watercolor pencil crayons and the teacher can get cups of water from the river and students can use those watercolor pencil crayons and paintbrushes to sit along the river and paint their own scene based on what they see. Although these ideas for lessons were devised with the grade 2 curriculum in mind, they can easily be modified and adapted to suit whatever grade level you're working with. Part of the grade 6 curriculum is to look into conservation and uh, the impacts of humans on the environment. So as you can see down here, uh, we have quite a bit of litter and so this is something that I'm hoping the students can pick out um, so they can find an area and they can pick up a topic that they want. So whether it's litter, uh, I notice that there's quite a bit of sand over the bridges so maybe they want to research a little bit more on the impact of all that sand and if it enters the waterways. And then is they can either write a letter or they can come up with some type of conservation plan that they can present to the town. Um, whether this is hypothetical or whether they actually want to follow through with this, uh, that's up to them. But it's great to get the young children of today and get them to impact the society of tomorrow. As you can see, there are a lot of signs of wildlife around here. Uh, over in the background, I'm not sure if it'll be viewable on the camera, but there are quite a few nests and that's something that we would encourage the students to look at. So if they're looking for signs of wildlife rather than wildlife itself. Another uh, aspect that the students can study is the signs of wildlife in the river. So they might not actually see a salmon or a fish, but they can be looking for bugs on the surface of the water or little bubbles. Uh, and what they'll be doing is they'll be recording this all in a video diary. And then as they're doing this, they'll take notes Uh, some type of poster or booklet with their research for that to be assessed by the teacher later on. For the older years, specific, specifically grade 10 English outcomes in Nova Scotia, uh, there are a lot of different things that you can do with the river pertaining to writing and reading skills in particular. One of the many things that you could do is to create a tourist pamphlet. Uh, students can, can examine different parts of the river that interest them specifically and they could create a pamphlet about those things. They could come here and they could take pictures with rented equipment. Um, the Dumfries Academy has that available and Nova Scotia schools do as well, so it all, could also be made applicable to our time here in Scotland. Um, and uh, that would sort of culminate in a, a professionally created pamphlet which they would have to research and cite. 
um, that would have information related to the river and about the area in general. For a poetry unit, it would be nice to have students sort of pick their own spot and record the sights and sounds like the wood pigeon behind me um, and the flowers and it's a particularly nice area for students to kind of have the space to choose their own spot and have a moment alone. Um, it would have to be important to make sure that no two students is too close to each other um, so that they could really kind of sit in the, in the sounds and the quiet of a natural area. Um, you know, it's easy to do found poetry with the things around them and also just describing the things that they see, hear, and smell. Um, this is sort of an easy way to sort of access more complicated ideas in a poetry unit. Dumfries is lucky to have Robert Burns to ha as one of its um, most famous inhabitants. Um, the famous poet wrote a lot about the River Nith and has several poems dedicated to the Nith in particular. It would be uh, extremely beneficial to students to meet reading and writing outcomes, um, to study his works and to look for references specifically to the river, and then be able to come to the river and write their own poems about it. Um, they can also do research and meet those outcomes here at the Robbie River Cultural Center, um, which has a lot of helpful staff and helpful information um, about the poet himself. Applicable to all of our age groups and different kinds of classes and different subject areas, is uh, our final idea of a final presentation would be an exhibition that students could bring um, could bring their parents and show them either their special place and the poems they've written um, or show their parents the local wildlife that they've learned about or um, show them their art and the art could be strung up on the trees it could be presented here um, where there's sort of places to sit and brick walls and and people could feel a little bit you know, more immersed in the space and be really connected to what their children have created over the course of their unit. Um, it's a really beautiful space and it, it's nice to be able to have the students become the teachers for the parents uh, and allows them to feel a little bit more ownership over their